It's your boy Zappa, professional stage engineer, and welcome back to Super Robot Wars Compact 3, day 2 of new setup. Still working just fine. So, we are here, stage 19. I'm, I'm ready to go. No no special commentary here. Alright, we are at Tatara Castle. Tiny little space. It's Tatara. Garon's take off. Derp. Stage 19, Garon's take off. At Tatara Castle, Drake has formed his forces to take over the Kingdom of Ra. Do and Ni worry about the sheer number of enemies that are headed their way. While Key worries about how to handle this, Hero simply says they need to stop Drake's ambition. Or Nobunaga's ambition, depending on how many times you're going to keep saying Drake. So, once again, having not saved a picture of this one. picture of our deployment map. Beep. I have the one for the next stage still available, but I forgot to do this one. So, to our left is everyone. If I recall correctly, some more enemies will show up around here. It'll be fine. I have a small plan. I just hope it works out the same way as it did before, because that was dope. Alright, one. Got it. So let's go get this going. One to be... Combat layer. Two can be... That Dunbine Mathis Getter Aphrodite Seven can be Mikander Eight. This new Gundam nine is actually going to be Ming Zero Ten can be Flones Eleven can be Catra and twelve is the Yellow. I think that's right. After the crew deploy, Shell realizes even more upper worlders have been summoned. Tell me can sense a huge power lurking behind the current force, which Marvel s says it's probably the huge aura ship, the Will Wisp, that Drake has finished. Elle announces to leave the ship to them while the team focuses on the rest of the enemies. Volka asks if she's got some ace in the hole. Of course she does. So Bright orders the team to get to work. And she did. That's not the right button. There you go. Wiped out immediately. Now I realize that in the, the next coming stages, the item drops are getting fewer and fewer.
Nope. This won't be much. Yeah. But now they have SP Recovery level 2. And also, Folka now has Support Attack. Hold on. I need to get you hyped. So now they have three levels of SP Recovery. Much like my progress in Compact or Impact, they are an SP battery very high recovery. to not being able to hit you. Mm. Eh. I mean, I get it. I'm not, like, upset that it was plinking off. I know what I'm doing. This isn't the Let's Player's Curse, this time. And that's just a weak attack. Uh -huh. Sure, why not? I would rather dodge. <laughs> nice. Still pretty good hit. You can hang out over here. You have a job to do. So do you.
go. Kill shot, but it's still that. That should definitely be a kill, but what if we cut that? Use the bazooka. Still good enough. That's still good old Amiru. I can't do the math in my head right now. Okay, so he should have 46 SP. And he got... To, so he's getting 6 SP back per turn. That's, that's not a bad game. You have to use a spell to hit you. Tiny ass little thing. Alright. Oh, I forgot what I was doing because I went and did math. When Jero goes down, she huffs about the speed of the fade in power. Marvel asks if she understands what she's doing by aiding Drake. Jero answers, so long as this, this is war and she gets to kill people, this is fine. Leaving everyone appalled at her response, she scrambles off into the next encounter. And she dropped. Nope, scroll too far. An aura converted. Which ain't a bad item. That's plus two move. Excellent. 
what's left? Argama and Healbot. Ah, dang. Way to fail. I need the only one that's gotten any real damage. But yeah, I want to take that piece of equipment off of her. She does not, she doesn't get regular, ex she doesn't get pilot points. She doesn't kill. Then. Okay, I fought off that sneeze for now. On enemy turn two, a Gaimalev squad led by Aria and Naria appear along the upper right of the map. They mention how lucky they are to find the team here, since they can make Lord Falcon look good. They contact the argument to confirm that the Escaflone is on board. If it is, go on and hand it over, or we kill. They really think the crew would just roll over and give it up like that? But even more enemy forces arrive in the form of Todd and the Virens, who didn't think he'd get to run into us so soon. Sho asks Todd why he won't use his aura power for a better cause. Todd retorts that because Sho defected, he's been through hell and back. Sho thinks Todd is just being petty and champ adds that he's just slashing on others for his own problems. Crunch. Show asks Bachelor Ellen if he realizes he's just being used by Drake. He answers that he's allowed himself to be used, and just like Show had done, and er, he allows himself to be used just like Show had done in order to survive in this world. And I mixed up letters again. Oop. There we go. He guarantees that Show will be killed next time, and doesn't give us anything. Definitely baited them in, although that <sighs> so I went back through, or just back to the start of the turn, and things are more or less the same. Lena still dies. I think there's an item that she has equipped that I need to really get off of her. It's causing death, but in, in all of my countering, Catra has now like super countered everyone on the side, and my notes stated that it was when Todd wins that goes down, but it looks more like after a certain number, which is curious because it took me killing all of them. It took me killing... Todd last, or when it was Todd. I don't know, there must, there has to be like, a number. Todd. Well, let me just make this note. Right. Okay, so. Rambling aside. When Todd or a certain number of enemies are defeated, he corrects that he did Oh, wait, no, no, no. Jake points out to the enemies, the team, our team are in disarray, and now it's the time for the Will Wisp to charge into Tartara and conquer it. Kosuke is the first to pick up on it starting up and can already tell it's too powerful to take on directly. Drake challenges that if they don't all come together, then they'll have no chance at sinking the Will Wisp. However, Princess L announces to concentrate all firepower on the Will Wisp, and Goro appears. The Goro on fire is blasting the Will-O-Wisp from across the battlefield. Shot mutters something about the, the, the Goron they heard about being finished. 
Drake asks how powerful, asks him how powerful it's supposed to be, but Weezy hasn't returned from a recon yet. Would the situation totally change? The Will Wisp and Drake retreat. So, yeah, all my stammering aside. Todd's still alive, but I guess I just killed enough of the reinforcements? I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that played out. I think... I think in my test run, I had Folka in a more ideal position, and he just like countered an instant kill Todd as as he is wont to do. And I had been doing better, and also I was in a better position. Blah. Anyway, let's let us continue. Really? You have potential or something? No, you just have defense. Dang. Todd must have used a baby attack or something. Oh well, you're done now. Go to bed. When Todd is defeated, he gripes that he didn't come back from hell just to be killed here. And he dropped a propeller tank. So let's go ahead. Hype up. Blessed. Uh, what are any of you at? 700. Let's see what becomes of this. Eh, no, no, no. I didn't think so. enough for you. It's exactly enough for you. So, if my plan works, then it'll be almost the same as last time, wherein, since they went for one heal bot, why not the other? And if they all try to conglomerate on her, as most of these should, they'll line up in here.
Or not. Clearly did not go according to plan. It's not a post move, right? The other thing. Okay, yeah, you go ahead and retreat. You can get in here. support but you can't hit anything anyway hmm lock it in oh you don't have enough energy for that. Didn't I literally just lock that in? Or did I cast focus like an idiot? I probably cast focus. Yep. It wouldn't have let me do that twice. Boom! Big Blast Divider! Seriously? Why did it go with Getter? God damn it, all my plans. Boiled. Uh, I'm actually not sure which one of you this is. Translator, real quick. Okay, yeah, that's Erin. Erin regrets that she's not in a groove when she's defeated, so she'll try again some other day. Gone. Barely worth the dollars. Flying ones don't have stealth mantles. Naria also whines when she's defeated. Next time she'll have to do much better for Lord Falcon. And she drops a magnetic coating. 
but at the mention of Lord Falcon, Vaughn is left in a stupor. Let's see if this is the last, last move. You whiffed it. Or at least both of you whiffed it. Is anyone left? Only people out of range. This is dumb. will do enough. Yes! Finally! It's battle over. Princess L thanks the team for their assistance. However, Ryoma gives credit to Princess L and her ship. She counters that Garon isn't finished and can't even move yet. The ship alone would have been able to take out Drake's, Drake's troops. As she's explaining, another ore battler Kawase Gu from the Kingdom of Na brings a gift for the team as great thanks for rescuing Queen Celia from Drake's grasp. It is the aura battler known as the Billabine. So yes, we now get the Billabine in Iron Inventory, and it's pretty damn good. I think. was going to infest in shoe show one point short three thousand dollars loss the crew meet back up with Celia and she urges them to utilize the middle line even if armor is a bit reluctant to take such a costly and high-end machine along with them Queen Celia insists that Shozam and the rest of the crew are the key to overall victory to make the world peaceful once more Celia asks if they've been visiting other worlds, and Ryoma confers that they've been to quite a lot as of late. Celia asks if they know why this is happening to them, but nobody has an answer, and they're fighting to find out. Oh, that's a typo. Hey, that's only two so far. We're doing good. Queen Celia hopes that they do. That's Mizal's Havel. He's been informed that Team Argma has appeared, which has him startled. All right, three typos since he swears he'd sent them to another dimension. Mizal, now troubled by this, can't figure out the mystery of the power in Gaia. He does fathom that the key lays with the Escaflone, that's with the Argama. So to further his plans, he'll just have to send them all over to Gaia. On the Argama, Bright states that they have to find to really reduce Drake's combat power, so Ni nice suggests hitting various production plants, like the one over in Wars Wall, where it is that the plant is working on another ore of the ship like the Will-Wisp. Bright agrees that Bright agrees that should be their next target, but there's a flash of light. Bolt is sure that Mizal must be using his dance power once again to send them somewhere else. And with Mizal again, or at his place again, at Mizal's place again, another subordinate tells Magnus that the Argama was whisked off to Gaia by Mizal to a place called Astria. Magnus says that he's getting rather adept at moving people around dimensions. His subordinate whines that they haven't got to raise any hell recently, but Magnus berates it. They'll get their chance to get wild soon. It all It's all according to Mizal's plan so far, so they only need focus on their current mission to capture the King of Free, who is also an Estri. Now properly over in Gaia, Vaughn has met with the King of Free, explaining the current situation. The king is having a hard time believing them, so Vaughn challenges him to use his magic to test if he's telling the truth or not. He 
Hitomi volunteers. Hitomi volunteers herself, believing she's the least likely to be considered untruthful. As the ceremony begins, Hitomi answers question after question about being from Earth, seeing the mystic moon, her powers of dowsing, which that's typo number four, and no, the, the audio did not break. I hope it didn't break. I'd be very upset if it broke. I think it's supposed to be dramatic. There it is. Okay, good. I was spooked. Uh, her weird predictions, uh, seeing the dowsing, her weird predictions, and so forth. The servant performing the experiment starts to get antsy, tries to go to Tomi into attacking him. Another type of fuck. But instead, she calls him out. His disguise is blown and is revealed. The servant is Arco. Then, Fulka wonder if Tomi's power had somehow blown his cover and rats him out. As a murderer, a man of many disguises and faces, but no face of his own. Arco threatens to kill her, but she turns it around, saying that his flame of life is near its end. Is she predicting his death? Polka also confronts Arco, asking what Mizal is planning. Arco won't stitch the plans and manages to escape. Clearly, there's a link between the Shura and the Zyvok Empire now, so the King of Freed says that Zyvok is on the move. So he'll have to get his kingdom ready. Shortly after, he starts to reprimand Alan for abandoning his position as knight to his kingdom. But before he can lay into him too far, Marana appears, intruding, claiming that she too has cut her ties with her kingdom. Zybok's ambition is going to ruin all of Gaia, not just Vanilla, and Freed is next on the list. While her father thinks... Fuck. While her father thinks they can just talk it out with Zybok, her brother has recognized that they're not going to leave Astri alone after conquering everyone else. Alan chose this path because he feels that's how things will come to pass. The King of Freed commends Princess Marana, complimenting on what a fine princess Astria has. His mind changed. He offers Alan a position in his kingdom's knighthood in order to combat Zyvon. Alan accepts, leading the king to ask if the rest of the team... Wow, I forgot a whole word there. Plan on assisting as well. Clearly, this goes without saying. So, I think, I'm trying to compare my money this time from last time, I didn't get too much different. I'm pretty sure I was around the lower 500,000, so instead of super boohooing about the bad rolls that I got, I'm just going to roll with what happened. But, next time, more compact. I thank y'all for watching. And as always, Sig Leon.